kids don't have compasses, huh? A compass helps tell which direction you're going. <laughs> well, it always points north. You figure out which way you want to go, and you can tell where you're facing because you always know which way is north. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> That'd help you. Why didn't I think of that? Hey, can I have that dirt? My bunny dug holes all over the lawn, and Dad says I have to fill them up. <laughs> Boy, can that bunny dig. <laughs> Thanks. Anything you want to borrow, just ask. Gophers stroll in, eat delicious grapes, trigger the rope, gate slam shut, and wham! Gotcha, gophers! Ooh, ooh, ooh! Hey, gophers, come on in. Here, have a delicious grape. <gasps> oh, no! No, it's not! Uh, Are you here to catch them or feed them? <coughs> Just uh, <laughs> testing out the gopher cage. <laughs> Works. It's pretty good. Oh, oh, oh boy, I'm back. Don't worry. I'm gonna go get the extra heavy equipment, which has never, ever failed. I'll just be back. I'm gonna go. George had everything he needed. A compass, a professional digger, and a way to get rid of the used dirt. All he needed was enough time. Gotcha, George! <laughs> Calhoun, I have decided the gophers aren't as annoying as you. You go! The gophers can stay. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, what a mess! So, uh, who wants to help me clean this up? I can pay in grapes. Ha, ha, ha. 
George, right now the important thing is stopping this balloon. Maybe those sandbags were the balloon's anchors. You know you can't park here. Loading zone. Don't drop anything else. It makes us lighter so we go up. We need to be heavy to go down. <laughs> Officer Wint, my monkey is floating away with the boy next door. Climb on. <laughs> it's okay. I'll get us down. Just stay calm! Okay, they're just ahead. Easy. Let's try again. Got it! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Well, uh, good luck then. Oh, 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 I've got you, George. Oh, uh, that's not a safe and approved manner to ride a balloon. I know, Bill. I, I know. N now, don't worry. I I'm going to help you. Oh, oh, oh. This is what happens if you don't follow the rules. <laughs> the wind's getting stronger. You can tell from that flag down there. It could be worse, huh? At least the wind's not blowing us toward the ocean. <laughs> oh no! The wind changed! It's blowing towards the sea! Do you know what that means? But also, we're gonna float across the ocean, and I don't know how to stop us. <laughs> we'll probably land in some other country where I don't even speak the language and hate the food. <laughs> I wanna go home. <sighs> I wish I knew how you city kids stay so cool under pressure. <laughs> That's a great one. George, <laughs> you took the pictures for me. <laughs> uh. 
this wood was as long as the floor, which meant he could do this. <laughs> Score another one for Monkey Brains. So that's what the goggles were for. <laughs> this wall needed something to hold it up while he nailed it down. Just one wall to go. Huh. But George was out of nails. And the only wood left was the piece he couldn't lift. <laughs> Luckily, Mrs. Rankins told him he could have any wood he wanted. <laughs> Mr. Quint wasn't home. But George had seen him get nails this way. George figured a treehouse didn't need a wood roof, especially since he was out of wood. Yeah, how do you like your new... Oh, oh. <laughs> All fixed and solid as a rock. Maybe you should have used nails. <laughs> oh, I'm dying to know what you've been up to. Can I look yet? Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it? Is is it a house? I, I mean, it's a house. You built your own treehouse. Wow. <laughs> I am very impressed. Say, where did you get all the wood and nails George! and- George! <laughs> did you take my chicken's wall? George, <laughs> did you take nails from my dock? Because, look, uh, I'm wet. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm, I'm sure it was a mistake. <laughs> He'll give everything back, George. Before he'd had a chance to make even one house rule, George had to take his treehouse apart. Wait, I said you could have any nails you wanted. I could have been more specific. Then I can make a new wall. That one looks like it belongs there. Now George had a place where he made the rules. Rule number one, you have to draw on the walls. And rule number two, always butter your corn with your feet. Oh, this, this isn't easy. <laughs> House rules, <laughs> I know. Okay. <sighs> Notes didn't climb stairs anymore. Betsy, for crying out loud, I'm in third grade already. Oh, Betsy, wait! 
what did you do with my xylophone? Uh, uh, now, Patsy, don't get sore. <sighs> I don't know. Wait! <laughs> George was so desperate, he tried everything. This was hopeless. George was never going to figure out how to put on those keys. This key had a number on it. And so did that one. They all had numbers. The first was eight. What comes after eight? Six was all roundy like eight. They just looked right together. But they didn't sound right, and time was running out. What if eight wasn't the place to start? Maybe number one came first, like in counting. George could count to five, and the clock helped him get to 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Trouble was, he had three keys left. All right, stand in front of the risers. I want to get a group photo. Oh, but Aunt Margaret, I have to find George and my xylophone. Oh, this will only take a second, dear. <gasps> Where did those last three keys go? George couldn't count to 15. Each key was smaller than the one before it. Maybe... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <sighs> Only one way to test if he'd gotten it right. Say cheese. And the notes climbed the stairs. <laughs> My xylophone! Hey, what'd you do to it? <laughs> I can't believe you fixed it! Huh? This key always used to wobble. Oh, thanks, George. <laughs> is to push this button and let you back inside. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
And don't forget, be a good little monkey space walker. There's nothing a monkey likes better than a spacewalk. <laughs> wow, that city kid really gets around. <laughs> George knew what he had to do first. Remove the nuts using the wrench. Why didn't it move? He knew the rule. Lefty Lucy. And righty tighty. He wasn't the first monkey to mix up his Lucy and his tidy. Just the first one in space. <laughs> oh, uh, did I mention George only has enough air to last two minutes? Uh, well, you did now. George, you must complete the mission expeditiously. Huh? I mean, finish up and get back in the rocket very quickly. <laughs> Putting replacements in was pretty easy. And then it wasn't. <laughs> Maybe he needed to put this stuff in exactly where the old stuff was. <laughs> oh no, this last hole was a completely different shape. George, you need to head inside, now. George? I'm going out there after him. You can't. You don't have a tether. Oh, boy. <sighs> Why, it wasn't a different shape at all. Now he needed righty tidy. George, you have only five seconds of air left. That's it, I'm going out. No, you'll float out into space. George did it! The telescope controls work again! Great work, guys. You're coming home. Oh! It wasn't two minutes. It was an hour and two minutes. <laughs> My mistake. Maybe dog food made Hundley jumpy. Only one way to find out. George didn't feel any different, so it wasn't the food. 
Huntley was more energetic than ever. Now he wanted to go back out to play. Hundley pretending to be asleep? Or had his mood changed again? Play, but he had to solve the mystery of Hundley. <laughs> this was too much. Was Hundley sick? No, his nose was cold. sorted his photos into two groups. Quiet, normal Hundley, and lively, unusual, unhundley. He didn't even know what he was hoping to see. Then, he noticed something. Normal Hundley had a brown collar, but jumpy Hundley had a red collar. Charky jumped around a lot, and she had a red collar, too. George had the solution. Red collars make dogs jump more. <laughs> to test his theory, George put on a red tie. Hmm, he didn't feel different. He couldn't jump higher. Maybe it only worked on dogs. <laughs> Huntley thought he sure was looking good tonight. Everything. Hundley was acting like two different dogs because he was two different dogs. <laughs> Hundley! George! Dicey! <laughs> I've got you. I'll take her, uh, my poor little Doxy. Oh, yes, 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 she did. This is my sister, Dorothy. Doxy has a way of getting loose. Wow, if I didn't see her right there, I'd think that was Hunley wrecking the place. <laughs> George was having so much fun with Doxy. Maybe someday Hundley would meet a monkey he could have fun with too. <laughs> the squiggle was much thicker in Sue Berm's painting. Was it because she was bigger? Or was it because she used a bigger brush?
George needed to paint a lavender blob. But he had no lavender paint. Out here, Mr. Glass. Uh -oh. Mr. Zubel and Mr. Glass were right above him. George worried they'd look down and see the painting. Ah, we could also use lights like this to focus attention on the painting. Great, let's do it. There's one other thing I think you should have. It's in the oven. You keep art supplies in your oven? N no, I make carrot cake. Oh, one piece, then back to my lobby to hang my unique painting. George had to finish his painting in the time it took one billionaire to eat one piece of carrot cake. Blue was the closest color George had to lavender, but it was wrong. Sharky's feet reminded George how Sue Burr mixed colors to make different colors. Sharky <laughs> hadn't made lavender, but she had made black. to find the combination of colors that would make lavender. <laughs> White turned the color lighter. George hoped he could get to the glass tower before Mr. Glass. Uh, oh, uh, hi, George. Hey, that's my unique painting, and another one just like it? There are two. And that's not unique. There cannot be two. Every Sue Byrne painting is different. And why isn't it in my lobby, where I left it? Monkey! <laughs> hmm. They're almost identical, but this one has Subram's nose print. Uh -oh. The ripped one is the original. Monkey! Hold on. George, did you make this copy because that one ripped? It's almost perfect. You're a good painter, George. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. A painting monkey? A painting elephant? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Well, of course not. Because what I'm thinking is... Unique! me that anywhere else in the whole world there's an elephant and a monkey painting in a lobby. Well, I'd say your lobby is unique. Yes, exactly. And you know the best part. <laughs> they work for peanuts. <laughs> First, he'd need someone who could distract the women. Second, he needed someone who could open that cage. If anyone could open that cage, it was Charky, the dog escape artist. Next, he had to explain his Hundley escape plan to his team of experts. He showed them where the cages were and which one had Hundley in it. 
Well, you like the flea bath, huh? You are an itchy fella. <laughs> Phase one, the distractor. I'm coming, I'm coming. Who is it? Oh, Gwen, you got to come see this. What? Oh, <laughs> how sweet. Oh, look at this. Look. I'm gonna eat you up. Well, don't you think that's the cutest thing you've ever seen? <gasps> you are too cute. <laughs> Phase two, the escape artist. At least phase one worked. Hmm, who is that? We'd better check the cages. <laughs> There's no one missing. <laughs> now Gnocchi was getting locked up, and George couldn't open the cages. Or maybe he could. Please. Thank you. If he squeezed this, it moved those things and unlocked the door. Was he forgetting something? Like the sliding bar across the top? <laughs> He was so sure it slid out. Maybe he pushed when he should have pulled. George hadn't figured out phase three, how to get out unseen. Would you please go see what's upsetting them? Oh, it's just the cleaning lady. Oh, the cleaning lady. Stop her, please. I got to pay her. <laughs> Too late. She's gone. There was one step left to complete George's plan. Now that Hundley felt dignified again, George could get back to his game. And Hundley could get back to defending his lobby's dignity. The show went on. And neither George nor Bill missed a single cue. But the most difficult cue was still to come. She's out in all weather, looks stylish in leather, has tons of bovine We're doing great. Just that one big cue left, remember? 
<laughs> it's not her sirloin steaks, it's the milk she makes. How I love to hear One confetti, no two curtain, three trap door, four flat, five curtain. Got it? Uh-huh. What starts in her order ends up as fresh butter or milk or cream or yogurt. Uh-oh, if you please. someone could trick. Everything she eats turns into lactose treats. From an ice cream sundae to a taco Got it. with cheese. George, pull trap 3C. Uh-huh. No, one C. <laughs> was odd. Bill was usually so responsible. One minute! <laughs> Starts in her order, ends up as fresh butter, or milk or cream or yogurt if you please. Where could he be? Nice skunk! Please don't spray me! Milk and mix her happy, just see her wag her tail. A thousand squirts, it never hurts when I fill up my pail. Okay, just breathe normally. Whoa! <laughs> uh. Neptune's knickers. Ugh. A skunk! <laughs> just don't alarm it. George knew the skunk could spray at any moment and ruin the show. But he also knew the show must go on. Don't upset the skunk. He's gonna spray, he's gonna spray! <laughs> so George concentrated real hard. So whenever you're moving, please drop what you're doing and thank this lovely creature here and now. <laughs> and counted one, A, B, C. She's a topsy turnsy, pure red guernsey, four legged miracle of nature. Look no. Hi, uh, I was going to do some frog calls for you. <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> Ribbit. Ribbit. George, you were amazing. Maybe the best stagehand ever. And that's about it. Curtain call, everyone. You fellas, too. You know, with all the chaos, I didn't have time to think about being scared, so I wasn't. I must say, those were some fine frog calls. Oh, you're just being kind. Miss Taraga reconnected the pipes, then had one last thing to do. Would you like to open the main and allow everyone to have water again? <laughs> no! Open it! Lefty Lucy! Hundley wasn't sure George should be taught things like this. George, would you like a boat or a nice ducky? <laughs> I'll go first thing tomorrow. 
Um, you'll clean up so I can go buy toys now? <laughs> Remember how to use the dishwasher? First, scrape the food <laughs> off the... <laughs> George, being a good little monkey, did just as he promised. Whoop. Dishwasher this time. Why? Mr. Auger must have missed a clog. It was a good thing George had watched him closely. Righty tighty shuts off the water. Everything Mr. Auger had done, but didn't find a clog. If the last clog moved to the kitchen, maybe this clog had moved downstairs. <coughs> this was too big a job for one monkey. He'd better go get the man with the yellow hat from the store. Being a good plumber, George reopened the water main so everyone would have water. Being a monkey, he forgot he'd opened the taps in the apartment. Hundley was relieved. With George gone, nothing sloppy could happen. <laughs> Pipes should always be properly tightened. George, when you came to the store and wanted me to come home, did it have anything to do with the water pouring off of our balcony? Did you call the plumber yet? Is something wrong? I was on the roof feeding the pigeons. <coughs> Holy hinges! <coughs> Humbly! <coughs> oh boy. Found your clog. You can't dump food in the dishwasher. <coughs> And from now on, leave plumbing to the experts. That would be me. His plumbing day's over. George enjoyed a nice hot bath with his new tub toy. Guaranteed never to slip down the drain. like the hat. So George added more fun. <laughs> For himself. And in conclusion, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah etc. So forth and so on. <laughs> well, that's some hat. And yellow.
<laughs> Can I see? Oh, boy, this is one fun hat. Wow, if I could have had a hat like this, I may never have gotten my yellow one. That was the best thing anyone ever said to George. You want me to have it? This is the best thing anyone ever gave me. Oh, surprisingly comfortable. You want me to wear it outside? Sure, why not? <laughs> Good after. Oh, some chapeau. George made it. <laughs> Having people see the man with the yellow monkey fun hat made George feel very proud. <laughs> Hi, Charky. Oh, easy, girl. Oh, no. I'm late. George, I've got five minutes to get to the museum for my speech. I, I have to make a good impression. <laughs> George was tempted to play with the yellow hat. But the man had asked him not to because he needed to wear it to give a very important speech uh? at the museum. Uh. Oh, boy. Uh. Bye, George. Uh. Bye, George. <laughs> and if an apple traveling at the speed of light hits a static banana... Oh! Everyone's here already. Great. Uh, Professor Wiseman asked me to speak today about the scientific method. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we've all heard the saying, what goes around comes around. Um, haven't we? Um, did I say something wrong? No, continue. This is fascinating. Whoa, what stuck to my hat? Oh! I'm wearing George's... <laughs> Actually, I, I can explain. The scientific method is about thinking creatively, taking chances, and being willing to fail. And you made that point very dramatically. I did? Oh, so modest. Now where can I get a hat like that? Well, George made it. I want one. I want two. <laughs> And that's how George got his picture on the museum wall. First, George had to figure out exactly where that noise came from. Except it seemed to come from every direction. Huntley didn't feel dignified, but he didn't feel scared either. <laughs> okay, the one thing George knew about sound was the closer he got to something, the louder it was.
But how could George get close to the creepy noise without getting close to the creepy noise? George was right. You should save everything because you never know when you might need it. To help pinpoint the noise, George divided the basement into four sections. He recorded the creepy noise in each of the four sections. George played the recording and listened closely. <laughs> now they knew the noise was coming from the part of the basement near the boxes. They'd found it. Oh, my! What a creepy noise! Yeah, I guess we should go down and take a look. After you! No, 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 after you! Huh? Hundley had enough. He was tired of being afraid. This is a cow. <laughs> Cow. <laughs> yeah, Mo. Aw, Hundley must be the bravest dog in the city. Woo! Woo! Well, let's get the rest of those boxes down here. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you learned noises are nothing to be afraid of? <gasps> you don't shed the. Maybe we should keep your stuff upstairs, George. You never know when we might need it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, help! Attention! Attention! Help! 